Hi everyone. I want to talk about how can you figure out what your error is when you're using a Taylor series to approximate something. So for example, let's say that I wanted to approximate 1 over e using a series. So I could use the series e to the x, and if I'm trying to approximate 1 over e, that's the same thing as if x is negative 1. So 1 over e is e to the negative 1, so I plug negative 1 as x into my series, and I get this. Because we know that this series converges, uh, I could calculate this value as close to the true value as I wanted by adding up the complete infinite number of terms. Of course, in reality, I can't add up an infinite number of terms, so I have to choose some number of terms to add up. So obviously, if I add up the first three terms, that's not going to be very close to the true value. But if I want to be more accurate, I can add more terms. So one question you might ask is, if I want to calculate this within a cer certain degree of accuracy, so say within one-tenth of the true value, how many terms do I need in order to be sure that I'm close enough? That's the kind of question that we're going to answer today, at least for this kind of series. So first, a little terminology. Um, I'm going to use the symbol P to represent a particular polynomial approximation. So the subscript tells you the degree of the polynomial. So here, p sub 4 means a fourth degree approximation. So it's going to be my first five terms here. All right, so the entire rest of the infinite series is given the label r sub 4. Uh, this is the error that's, a, that's uh, associated with the fourth degree polynomial approximation. Um, we call it error because it's the difference between whatever my approximation and the true value is. So let's say I was going to take this equation and solve it for r sub 4. I would subtract this, which is my approximation, from the true value. So if I'm subtracting them, that's the difference between the true value and my approximation. And so that's what the error is equal to. So what you might wish we could have is maybe there's a nice equation that would tell us exactly what this error is. If you think about it, that's kind of a paradoxical desire because if we knew of an equation that was a closed form, short equation, uh, that represented the entire rest of this infinite series, then we wouldn't have any need for infinite series because this fourth degree polynomial plus your other term is going to tell us what the original function is. So we can't have a, a nice equation that tells us exactly what the error is. But what we can do is we can do something called bounding the error. That is, we can say, we're sure that for a fourth degree approximation, the error is never going to be larger than something. And it might be smaller than that thing. And it might be way smaller than that thing. But we're just trying to say, at least it's not going to be bigger than a certain number that we know. So let's keep going through the example and see how this is going to work. So the first thing I want you to notice is that when we plug in negative 1 here, it produces an alternating series. And uh, it satisfies all three conditions of an alternating series. The terms are alternating in sign. The n plus first term has a smaller magnitude than the nth term. So in other words, the magnitude of each term is getting smaller. And the limit as n approaches infinity of the magnitude of the terms is approaching 0. So in other words, they're getting smaller towards 0. So let's imagine adding one term at a time. So my first term is 1. So it'll take me here to 1. And that's my 0th degree approximation of my series when x equals negative 1. If I add the next term, it's a negative 1, so that takes me right back to 0. And that's my first degree approximation at x equals 1. I call it first degree because it comes from this linear equation up here. I'm taking my first two terms. OK, let's do a couple more. The next term, I add a half, so that takes me to a half. And that's my second degree approximation. The next term, I'm going to be subtracting 1 over 3 factorial, which is 1 over 6. So I'll be subtracting a sixth. So that takes me to about here. And that's my 
fourth degree approximation. Oh, nope, sorry, that's my third degree approximation. Okay, I'm not gonna write any of the numbers, but my fourth degree approximation is going to add a little bit, and then my next one's gonna subtract a little bit. And eventually these things are gonna end up at the true answer in here somewhere, which is the value I'm trying to calculate, one over E. All right, so here's what I want you to notice about this picture. First, we know that the terms alternate. That means that we alternate going this direction and going this direction. Whenever we add another term, we're either adding a number, or if we've just added a number, we're subtracting a number. The second thing you should know is because the magnitude of each term is smaller than the one before it, if I've just moved a certain distance this direction, when I add the next term, I'm gonna be going the other direction, but I also know I'm not gonna be going as far. So what that means is that if my second degree approximation has gotten me to a certain x coordinate, I know I'm never gonna be bigger than that ever again because I'm gonna go less far when I subtract, and then I'm gonna go even less far than that when I add. So there's no possible way I could add enough that would get me back past my second degree approximation. So now let's talk about error. If I want to know what's the error associated with my second degree approximation, visually the error is how far off from the real answer I am. So if the real answer is in here, the error is that distance. Um, the problem is, I, the whole point of this is I don't know exactly what the true answer is, so I can't calculate what that distance is. So that's why we have to put a bound on the error. We have to find what's something that's easy to calculate that we know is definitely larger than that distance. Something that's larger, that's definitely easy to calculate, is the very next term I'm going to add. So if this is my second degree approximation, if it ends up here, the very next turn, term I'm going to add is this negative one-sixth, which comes from here. Whoops, uh, yeah, which comes from here. So the reason I know that the magnitude of that term is larger than the error is because I know that it takes me to the other side of the true value. The reason I know it takes me to the other side of the true value is because I'm going to end up in the next term adding an even smaller amount. So it's like every single term I add is going to take me to an alternate side of the true value. So if I want to know, so at any given time, if I want to know how far away am I from the true value, I can't know that. But I can know that the size of the next term I'm adding is, because it's going to take me to the other side, is larger than that distance. So let's go even more general. If I've got an alternating series, then my nth degree approximation is the first n plus 1 terms of that series. And Rn is the error approximated with Pn. So it's the difference between my approximation and the true value. So what we're saying is the magnitude of the error associated with an nth degree approximation is smaller than the very next term, whoops, is a, smaller than the very next term that you would be adding. So back at our original example, um, I was trying to calculate 1 over e. I decided to use a fourth degree representation. So if I actually add all these numbers up, I get 0 0.375. Okay, and I want to know how far away is that from the true value. And we're pretending that we can't calculate the true value with a calculator. So the question is, what's the largest that I might be away from the true answer? That's this. So what this theorem tells us is that the magnitude of this error is less than the very next term that's not part of our approximation, because that term is going to take us across whatever the true value is in whichever direction we're going. So that's why we know that distance has to be bigger than the distance between where we are and the true value. So in this case, this is 0 .0083 approximately. 
So what that's told us is that the error associated with this prox approximation is smaller than 0 0.008. So that's pretty close. That's pretty good error.